You're listening to Bizarre Buffet, a podcast of all-you-can-eat weird. I'm your host, Mark Toriello. I'm Jen Wilson. And I'm Mark Blustein. There'll be food and drink and ghosts. And perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. When we first went in, one of the people said, Who are you? And Tex said, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Hey, everyone. Hey. Hi, it's me, your mother. How are you? And it's me, your baby sister. Oh, this is so cute. Goo goo gaga. Goo goo gaga. Oh, God, I have postpartum. We really need to get an adult baby. We, we do. do. On our show. We absolutely We're do. We're almost at episode 100. And we are. And still so have not gotten yeah. an adult baby yeah. on this show show absolutely like they never, not they never respond back to no. me well you know what Ever. i think it's jen has been on this mission for a while i've been on this mission but you know what i also think it's like this sense of privacy you know it's yeah. okay so, for example like people who are into different types of kinks yeah. or like into bdsm yeah. like that's a very vulnerable thing and like yeah. when you're playing like role playing as a baby that's a very vulnerable thing absolutely it is but the ones I'm reaching out to have Instagram accounts. <laughs> they yeah, do. But, but do they, but do they show their faces? Yeah. They do. And like, here's my mm. thing. I want to get one on so bad that like I would change their identity and change their voice. I, was, I thought you yeah, were going to say change like, their diaper. Well, that too. Them. I will <laughs> happily for our Patreon. Oh, my Patreon. Listen, I'll try anything twice. For our Patreon members, I will change an adult baby's diaper. Yeah, that's like top tier though. That's like top, top tier. Yeah. Just say all now. Are there any babies in your story? Oh my God. No, but you know. Are there any kinky people in your story? I mean, it could be a little kinky, but it'd be a fucked up kink. All right. That's for sure. Ooh. Well, I have two questions. and I, I love when there's like multiple questions. Oh, God. I can't so wait. So this is a little more time sensitive because this takes place around Halloween. It's not Halloween based. But okay. it is Halloween ish. Oh, okay. And we are in Halloween season. We are in Halloween you know. season. We are. Trick but or treat, bitch. Smell my feet. What was like your favorite Halloween costume? I'm going to go with what I did last year. <laughs> It was very creative. So I went as Kim Kardashian from Met Gala. Yes. When she wore the all black mm-hmm. and had like the black face mask. I love that. And I that. never will forget that moment watching it live <laughs> unfold on TV, her on the red carpet and being like, that is my Halloween costume. Yeah. <laughs> You even had the train. Like, you yeah. had the outfit perfect. I have to say, I was though, laughing when I saw took, the train. It took a lot of time and a lot of bobby pins. Yeah. And yeah. Jerry did a phenomenal job of pinning me into it. And I know you're both excited for our Halloween costume this year, which we're not telling anybody. Oh, my God. Top secret. Yep. Bizarre Buffet is going to put it out there for all of you to see. Mark and Mark both know exactly what it is. And it's amazing. It's amazing. And it falls into the Bizarre Buffet realm. That's all I will say. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Mark, what about you? What was your favorite Halloween costume? Yeah, Mark with the C. I remember a couple years ago when we lived in our last place. I dressed up as Mark here, Mark with a K. It was a lot of fun. That's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. What about you, Mark? I've had a few iconic costumes. Oh. One of my favorites was I was Gizmo from Gremlins. Oh, that was cool. I'm actually looking at Gizmo Uh, right now. He's in the room with us. He is in the room with us. For those of you watching, we'll insert a photo of it, but this was part of Mark's costume one year yeah i was gizmo from gremlins he's and like the bizarre buffet mascot i feel he is. really is him and gonk gizmo on the runway gizmo on the runway right yeah. you've been cobwebs many years oh i Oops. used to like take you know the fake cobwebs and i would cobweb an entire suit like so every individual garment was covered in cobwebs yeah and it, it was looked fun. really high fashion it did one halloween we went out to like qxt's my cobwebs kept getting stuck on everyone's costumes. <laughs> so it, it became... did someone call your costume someone, selfish? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this one woman was, like, next to me, and, like, I was, like, caught on her with the freaking cobwebs. <laughs> I was, like, trying to pull it off her because I felt bad, and I was like... I'm, you're caught I, in I my said, web. Said, you're caught in my web. I guess I'm a spider this Halloween. And she's like, I think it's a selfish. 
<laughs> Ew. Like, thank you. Rude. What she a was dick. Like, she was, I think she yeah. was drunk, but I think she was like, you're, I think your costume is selfish. Like, well, I think your face is selfish. I think you're selfish. Yeah. yeah. And my second question is, Ugh. if you were to encounter a monster or a person from a horror movie, which person would you be the most afraid to encounter? Good Michael question. Myers. Michael Myers, that's a good one. It's the whole just franchise mm-hmm. that gets me still to this day. Yeah. Even though I know that his mask is William Shatner turned <laughs> yeah. inside out. But it's just like the music. Yeah. And just like how quiet he is and how he moves so silently. And yeah. Every time, like, I see his, like, the mask or somebody dresses Michael Myers, like, to this day, like, still freaks oh. me the fuck out. I get it. He's dork. Yeah, he's dork-sided. If you have to ask me my favorite horror franchise, it's Halloween, but I am absolutely terrified of Michael Myers. I think that's why I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that, though. That means that the character is is doing what it was uh, intended to do. Absolutely. Right? I think for me... Linda Blair in The Exorcist. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would gonna... not want to encounter that bitch. I uh-uh. was going to say that. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I watched The Exorcist. I did not sleep for a week straight. Yeah, I'm, I believe it. I do. That movie was always one that really bothered me. And it's not because I'm religious or anything. That character and what she did it's and how she acted it is it's very uncomfortable there's something about it like i understand why people in the 70s when like they didn't see anything were like ah oh, people are leaving the theater throwing up <laughs> you know or everybody's barfing at the movie theater because of linda blair's portrayal you know it was one of those movies that, like, at any age, like, if I watch it and then I'm alone, I'm, like, a little creeped out. The, the theme song, though, I find to be very calming in a weird way. Oh, the, oh I love that. Tubular bells. Yeah, tubular, tubular bells. bells. Yeah. Actually, the other night, Jerry and I played that and the Halloween theme song, like, back to back, and I was like... <laughs> Tubular Bells is very therapeutic, and I, I don't know. I think well, I might prefer it over the Halloween theme song. Well, I love this. that. Do you remember in, like, the 90s, they made these CDs called Pure Moods? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So I had one of them. Did it have Tubular Bells it on it? Oh, it shut had up, Tubular did Bells it? on it on what? Pure Moods. Yeah. Why? Pure Moods Volume 1. Pure Moods yeah. Volume 1. That's Tubular great. Bells, yeah. Wow. Fun little fact. That is yeah. kind of ridiculous. I love it. Yeah. Wow. For me, the one I would... Being the most afraid of encountering is Candyman. Uh, he scares the shit out of me. Candy That's another man. one, yeah. Mark, don't even start. I know. Yeah. Well, listen, every so often I do it to Mark and I'll go, <clears throat> Candyman. Just stop. Stop. Yeah. Just stop. Everybody, if you want and me to say like, it five times, go to Patrick. I don't know. Like, and um, we will put Mark Bluestein in a room that's padlocked, yeah. and you can watch mm-hmm. what happens. Yeah. But I don't want to be but involved no in any way, shape, or Hold on, or hold on a second. I have something to tell you guys. Candyman. Uh, well, there ain't, there's no mirrors in here, so we're talking about Halloween. Yeah. We're talking kind of about horror movies. Yeah. For the topic of this episode, I have to say this is probably one of the most bizarre topics I'm covering in the history oh, of Bizarre Buffet. Oh, really? Because this topic, in my opinion, is truly an all-you-can-eat weird. Oh. It is dark. Trademark. So mm. just to preface this, we have a psychic. We have a set of twins. We have a murder, and we have Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. Wait, is oh, this going to be like a Halloween party from hell? Are we going to a Halloween party? We're not going to a Halloween oh party. Okay, we can actually, take off our masks. Halloween was not? actually canceled the year that all this happened. Oh, God. What year? 1988. <sighs> Holy shit. Ooh, the year before I was born. Yeah. Wow. The year after. And so I'm a few it. years later yeah. after that, because I'm youthful. You're young. Unlike these old biddies. <laughs> 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 Although I'm the one with the least amount of hair, it's fine. <laughs> calling everybody else old, calling myself out. Exactly. <sighs> Let's start off with the villain of this story. Was it Jason Voorhees? Sort of, yeah. Oh. In, a, in its own way. All right, I had to stop because I'm like going to crack the case. Yeah. Oh my God, so. Jen's always cracking the case. We're going to talk about a guy named Mark Branch. There's not really a lot of information out there about this topic. So I will say this. There was not a lot of information out there on this. Okay. You know, there was um, like a True Crime Network special thing. It was like seven minutes long that I found on oh. YouTube. And I had to go on to a few articles and like Reddit 
and uh, like Dead Journal, Live Journal. Okay. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, so kind of old. Okay, so Mark Branch was a 19-year-old guy from Greenfield, Massachusetts. Greenfield is a very small town. I think the population at the time was like 19,000. He had a history of emotional trouble starting at a very early age. Oh, I already know where this story is going. (laughs) He was never like officially diagnosed with anything. He was a student for a short time at New Salem Academy. He ended up leaving to get care at McLean Hospital. His parents, Betty and Richard, didn't speak much to the public about him or the murder that he committed. See, I knew where this was going. Yeah. Oh, God. Emotional uh, problems. Emotional, emotional problems. I have know. them, too. <laughs> Me three. Uh, yeah. Me four. Well, this guy, Mark, was very socially awkward. Socially. Jeffrey Dahmer. He was very Jeffrey dahmer Oh, no boy. But his... Awkwardness also leaned more towards an aggressive side. Oh, uh uh-oh. People that knew him mentioned that he was bullied a lot because of his awkwardness Mm -hmm. and his, like, extreme fascination of horror movies. Oh, mm-hmm. there's a clue for you there. It kind of reminds me of um, what is it? Scream when he's like, "What's your favorite it's scary, scary yeah. movie?" Maybe that's what he went around mm-hmm. saying. Maybe <laughs> he allegedly would speak about his fantasies of killing people. Oh, whimsical! Very whimsical. See again, I told you where this story was going. Yeah. <laughs> He would always, like, stress to other people that he had this, like, curiosity of, like, what is it like to kill someone? Wow. To murder someone. Is it, like, one of those, like, to justify that they have this sick obsession, that they have to constantly, like, say that to people? I mean, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I think he just wanted to get it off his chest. And I think he really just wanted to kill someone. (laughs) The annoying thing is... Life is nothing without passion. He's a murderer, this one. What's also annoying is that, you know, he was very vocal about his curiosity to kill people. And no one really took it seriously. They were just like, oh, he's just weird. He's just a little odd. Yeah, he's a little off. He's a little oddball. When Mark was in high school... One Halloween, he hid in the bushes while wearing a Jason Voorhees mask <laughs> and waited. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> Just for the record for <laughs> YouTube, God. I'm wearing a Jason Voorhees t shirt. Yeah, so one Halloween, he like hid in the bushes wearing a hockey mask. Did he come out with a chainsaw? <laughs> no, he came out, he came out with a knife. But he popped out of the bushes as, like, a girl passed by and he chased after her. Oh, what a frightening and, experience for her. Yeah, oh, yeah. And he tripped and fell. She got away. He later then told his friend, you know, had he not tripped, he probably would have killed her. Wow. That's mm-hmm. that's something. That's mm-hmm. And his friend Mark. was like, oh, Mark, yeah. you're so silly. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're silly, Billy. And it's so weird because him and I have the same first name. Oh, He's not... Mark with a K. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say, oh, I'm not included here. Mark, you should know by now you and I are never included in anything. No, else. we're not. We're the so outcasts. We're, we're the we're the outcasts. Yes, yes. We get locked in the attic with the... With Haley Joel Osment. Haley Joel Osment. In the sixth sense. And we have see dead, dead people. people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny because you mentioned, you know, we're talking about horror movies and you were talking about Scream. Mm. You know, like, what's your favorite scary movie? Oh, someone tell me he would call people and ask. Oh, God. He kind I of would. Oh, so, shit. And now, all this happened before Clear the point. Scream franchise. Was it's... this based off of Scream? Well, no, because this was 1988, <sighs> but it wouldn't surprise me if Scream took a page from this oh, or okay. Wes Craven or like the writers you know I okay. can't I can't clarify if they did or not yeah. but I could see it going leaning in that the direction connection. Yeah. yeah when he was in high school he used to keep files like his own file system on certain students in the school he would call them and basically talk to them on the phone leaving death threats but he would use his files to you know Say things like, I know you have a dog that's, like, in the backyard from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I know you guys had chicken for dinner. Like, I'm making these examples yeah. up. But well, that call was... back to Cindy James. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind Dead of, me. he had Dead a little me. bit of, like, a stalking-esque kind of vibe to him, you oh, could boy. say. Oh, boy. He was a little problematic, one could say. One time he put a scaffold through a photograph of one of the students in his high school and put it in her locker to terrorize her. 
Wait, he put a scaffold. Like, you know, like the scaffold like that they use in like medical stuff. It's like the long oh. scalpel. Scalpel? Oh, a oh. scalpel. <laughs> scalpel. A scalpel. Well, you know okay. How do you say it? No, you say it? no we're not going to delete no, it. No, because I'm no. going to tell you a funny story about this. Yeah. It is a scalpel. With a P. Really? Yes. Uh. <laughs> and I was doing it. Th- this has nothing to do with this story, but I was doing um, improv. I was doing it with like a group of people. We were doing it live in front of an audience and we were supposed to be like in a medical room okay. and I'm like calling different tools and I said scaffold instead of scalpel. Oh, it's scaffold. Uh-huh. But like everyone thought it was fucking hilarious that the rest of the improvisers like played off of that for like the rest of Oh, the- I love it. Of like our little bit that we did. What that's, a no! What a weird. weird. So it's, scaffold. it's scaffold. Oh, I've never had to use that word until today. No. Not scaffold, but I've done it before too. So yeah, he put a scalpel through her photo and left it in her locker. He would also write letters to certain girls in the school about how he would murder them. How romantic. Eventually, he was pulled out of the school. But again, it's like okay, you're leaving death threats. You're putting scaffolds and people's pictures and going into their lockers oh. why is nothing being done because it was the 80s yeah, yeah exactly They're like oh he's just troubled <laughs> and no big deal in the parents defense they did try like they actually tried they tried to get him help he went to you know public school then he went to private alternative school and then he went into programs for emotionally disturbed teens and children the common thing that was most identifiable about Mark was his obsession with horror movies. Now, when he was 18 years old, he worked at a local grocery store, and he would also work occasionally at a local video rental store called Video Expo One. I miss, I miss a good video Me rental too. store. Oh I miss my that gosh. shit. I the, miss that shit. Like Blockbuster. Oh, oh man. Weekends, like go rent a movie or two. Yep. Oh, yeah. And then the boxes that would be missing and then you'd be so disappointed because nothing would be behind it. Exactly. And, and you wanted like, to watch that movie so bad. But oh, yeah. Mark, did he have a favorite horror movie? He did. Oh. He had an obsession. Uh, with Friday an obsession. the 13th. With Friday the 13th. Oh, well, uh, uh, he was... Ex- Ooh, surprise. Surprise. Yes. surprise. <laughs> no, he had like this sickening obsession with Jason Voorhees well, that I'm going to tell you guys room. about. But, oh. you know, yeah, get, get a room. Yeah. Get a cabin. Get a get cabin. Get a cabin on the lake. Oh. But allegedly, one of the former employees did mention that he always rented horror films, stating that he said, the gorier, the better. Yeah. Which is fine. You know, I mean, listen. Hey, you know. There's nothing wrong with gore. No, there are plenty of people who enjoy it. Yeah. It was also said that his bedroom was, I mean, his bedroom sounds fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Because his room was filled with horror memorabilia, horror replicas, hundreds of, like, horror magazines, probably, like, Fangoria. He also had quite the collection of, you know, hockey masks. So, very cool. It's just a shame that he was, you know, a complete nut job and a psychopath. Yeah, a crazy killer. You know, there's people like us, you know, who collect that sort of stuff, but we're not going around killing people. No. No, exactly. So, So there is a difference. Yeah, you can't blame Mm. the movies. No, you can't. It's like blaming music like you can't that's like how they tried to blame insane clown posse for the columbine shootings oh yeah oh boy <laughs> whoop 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 this juggalos juggalos so now we have like the killer right yeah. now let's the other thing I mentioned is that we have twins, which oh. is funny because Jen just did an episode just the, about Just our twins. last episode was we, about the amazing silent twins. Yeah. So we kind of are getting back on the same menstrual cycle. Yeah, yeah a little bit, honestly. Yeah. Wow. Satellites are like... So let's talk about these twins. Their names were Sharon and Cheryl Gregory. Sharon and Cheryl. Sharon and Cheryl. Gregory. Now, That's a hard mouthful. It is. It's, it's going to be hard for me to say. And for twins sure. and their twins Sharon and Cheryl were twin sisters who knew Mark you know they were both from the same community they had similar circle of friends they were both acquainted with Mark they weren't like friends with him but they were acquainted okay they knew like they knew him through their social circles I, I will say this one of the twins dies and she's murdered by Mark oh and it's, uh, 
surprised. Yeah. Saw where this one was yeah. going, too. Oh, boy. So, they broke their twin connection. The, just like the Givens. Just like the Givens. <laughs> just like June and Jennifer. Unfortunately, it was Sharon that was murdered. Well, but she didn't take her life. She got murdered. She got murdered. murdered. Mm-hmm. So, at the time before Sharon's murder, which took place on October 24th of 1988. So, right before Halloween. Right before wow. Halloween. Getting ready. Week, to, week prior. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just yawned. She was a psychology major at the local college. Sharon had always felt that there was something a little bit off about Mark. No shit, Sherlock. No shit. <laughs> yeah. Def- smart girl. But yeah, tuned in, dialed in. She definitely was like, okay, there's something wrong with him. And from that, she kind of, uh, she didn't have like an obsession with him, but she was intrigued okay. by him because he was a little bit off, right? And she uh, studied it, psychology. Yeah, so she kind of like, it was like um, a case study. Yeah, well, quite literally, because it gets a little murky, but allegedly as a result of this kind of intrigue that she had, she did write a psychological profile. Really? Yeah. On, on oh, him. Oh, shit. Does it exist? D- yes and no. Okay. It's not out there for the public, right? Correct. Yeah. No. And I she don't... she made this profile. She shared it with him. And this is where it gets murky. But allegedly, after this profile was made, he wanted possession of it. And he would basically, he said he would do anything to get possession of this profile, which I guess in this case included murder. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! Oh shit, Sharon. This Fucking is, Mark. Uh, Mark. This is where Mark really goes overboard and mm. a little nuts. But on the twenty fourth of October, he ended up driving to her family's home in Greenfield, mm. dressed in full on Jason Voorhees costume, oh, hockey shit. mask, the jumpsuit, combat uh, boots. Oh god! Like uh, full on. I'm Jason. scared. Yep. He got there at 12 noon, which I think is a weird time to kill someone. Like, uh, yeah. It's like he woke up in the morning, got ready, and was like, okay. I don't All know, right. Time, sorry, time like, to dress as Jason. And if you're going to be dressed as Jason for he is and do that, wouldn't you want to do it in, at nighttime? Yeah. I mean, one the, in, in the woods. woods. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not so, condoning yeah. his. But I mean, cinematically. Murder. Yeah. From a cinematic perspective, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's just not authentic. Right. No. Once he arrived, he somehow managed to get inside and he chased Sharon up the stairs into the bathroom. Once he got her into the bathroom, she locked the door. He somehow managed to get inside Mm -hmm. and he brutally stabbed her to death in the head, the abdomen and her chest. Oh, God. He also slashed her throat. Oh, you fucker. Mm Mm-hmm. The weapon was not found at the scene, but it was quite obvious that it was done with a knife. The blood was not just in the bathroom, but it made its way into the hallway and the steps. Oh, boy. Now, the police chief of 25 years said it was the grossest killing of his time. Oh, the grossest. I'm just like, that's a weird... The grossest yeah. killing of my time. Wow, wow. I've never seen a killing quite as gross as this one. And the sad thing is, is that the person that found the body was her twin sister, Cheryl. Oh, no. Which is really upsetting. I know. It's awful. You know, Cheryl was very smart because she immediately informed the police. She was like, look, I think I know who did it. It's this guy, Mark Branch. Good for her. That's cool as fuck. And, you know, before her sister, Sharon, was murdered, Sharon told Cheryl that Mark creeped her out by how he would stare at her. The police afterwards, they immediately went to Mark's home. He wasn't there. Mm. So now we're like, where's this guy? Where's Mark? He's yeah, looking gone. for some camp counselors. And his mother, you know, did speak to the police. They let them in, but he was missing. When the parents let the police in to the house, they went to his bedroom and they were like, oh my God, there's all this horror movie stuff. Mm-hmm. He clearly did it. He clearly killed this person because he has horror movie posters and, you know, Jason memorabilia. Automatically, now we're kind of going into this satanic panic. Yeah, and, and that was the time for it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like the flagship time of satanic oh, yeah. panic. They automatically blamed it on the horror movies. 
And that pisses me off because yeah. it's like, okay, yes, he did it, but it wasn't because of the horror it movies. Because, it wasn't like the horror movies told him to do yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like any other art form, like movie, music, anything else, you know, these are simply expressions. They're not conduits of like a, a mass destruction. Right, exactly. Like if you are emotionally unwell or anything to that effect, you're right. going to be that way regardless of what you like. You can like Disney. Lord knows yeah. there is a case of this family who lived in Disney because they were obsessed and the husband killed all the family and lived with the corpses in the bedroom. I've heard that story. Oh, I've yeah. never heard that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, that's a good one. If you want to hear about this story, let us know. Disney Channel should do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they should. Family. After Hocus Pocus oh, 2. After Hocus Pocus 2. Yeah, which sucked. I didn't see it, so don't say anything. Oh, God, I won't. I won't. I haven't watched it yet. I'm interested to hear what you think. I'm sure I'm going to hate it, but... Um, <laughs> but, you know, you want to find out on your own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I respect that. After they go to his room, and he's, like, obviously the prime s- suspect, and they can't find him, Mark's friends did speak about their concerns that he might be going on a little bit of a Jason Voorhees killing spree. Oh, boy. Which spread a lot of fear and panic in the oh. town and the tri-state area. Everyone in a freaking Halloween costume could potentially be Mark. So were they like grabbing kids on the street? But like, hey, yeah, hey, kid. Were yeah. they like going after anyone dressed as Jason Every, Voorhees? Yeah, oh, it was just everybody in general. Pan- pandemonium. Because how many Jason films were out at this point in time? Probably, Probably a like lot. Seven. Yeah. And the other oh, thing boy. too is like you can easily hide behind a mask. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is the costume to hide in, mm-hmm. right? Like your face is covered. Yeah. So people were literally calling the police left and right anytime they would see someone in a costume or a hockey mask, which was a very popular costume because yeah, that was like yeah. the peak of the franchise. Yeah, that was its heyday. So the town basically had to cancel Halloween because they were like, he might go on this like Halloween killing spree. So mm-hmm. was there like a curfew in town and stuff? And yeah. Like- you know, people like were told like don't keep your porch light on, don't encourage trick or treating. Put out know. the sign that says "out of candy." Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> also, like the town theater, like I think Halloween Four was supposed to come out that week, oh. and the theater ended up canceling, having you know, like showing Halloween Part Four. So Michael Myers had to be canceled because yeah. of this fuckhead. The Jason. Oh, this motherfucker. Thanks. What good marketing though for the oh, yeah. Jason yeah. franchise. So, in the search for Mark, they did find his car the day after the murder. It was 13 miles outside of Greenfield. It was parked near the woods, and they found blood in the car. The blood did match the blood of Sharon. Oh, poor Sharon. Sharon. So, now we have, like, DNA evidence. Like, they're not just saying, oh, he did it because he likes horror movies. Like, now he actually did it. Like, there's scientific proof. Yeah, but it sounds like, though, in the event that he didn't, they were trying to paint a picture from the beginning. Yeah. Which is kind of concerning because it's like, innocent until proven fucking guilty, bitch. Of course, of course. But that's not a thing, I guess, in America, at least. And I feel like this is a common theme that happens to, like, characters or people that are ostracized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different, you know. Absolutely. And what's unfortunate is that, like, in this particular case, he did, unfortunately, murder somebody, which is so fucked yeah. but you know there are plenty of cases where people who are innocent who have these same interests are um you know convicted of murder and things like that i mean look at corpse wood manor yeah Call back to another episode exactly. you or know lord of the wigs lord of the wigs phil specter mm. phil specter all day long we were just re-watching a documentary and we were just talking about him before yeah. we recorded we were r.i.p phil we think he's innocent yes we do yes. and i will march in the parade yeah. absolutely all right so remember how i said there was like different elements in this mm-hmm. and then one of the final elements is a psychic. So it's like... Oh, did they hire a psychic to try and find Mark? <laughs> yeah, they did. Oh, stop. They did. So, you know what's funny? Like, I've always been fascinated with hiring psychics to, like, solve a murder crime. Yeah, and it's a very kind of, like, it seemed more so, like, in the 80s, 90s, yeah. like, that, like, police, like, how is it that a police department kind of is like, yeah, a psychic, Absolutely. I've makes always sense. found that really interesting that they yeah. use psychics. Absolutely. Yep. It's fascinating. And I don't like I think it could be helpful, but I I think ninety nine percent of the time yeah. they're they're oh. cold reading. Well, I think 
Yeah. Let us know on Instagram. Yeah. Do you think psychics are real? Are you a psychic? Do you want to come on our show? Yeah. yeah. If so. Yeah, know. exactly. There you go. Inbox us. So they ended up hiring a psychic. Part of the reason is because he has been successful in these sort of things. His name is John Monty, and he was from Massachusetts. Oh, John the okay. Psychic. John Monty the Psychic. Okay. Yes, John. Work, yeah. girl. In the past, he's had some successes, you know, in his psychic work. For example, in Most Famous... In March of 1981, he predicted on a radio show that, I guess, the president, President Reagan, the total asshole. Fuck him. Burn in hell, you cunt. Mm -hmm. He's a bastard. He predicted on a radio show that Reagan would be shot by the end of March. Interesting. But that he would survive. He also said that he would be shot on the left side after doing a speech in Washington. Oh, shit. Was John Monty the shooter? No, wasn't it someone of the Manson family that was part of that? Was no. it? I'll tell you who it was. Oh, or someone, God. Or somebody was... Some, uh, never mind. There was a connection There's to a one of the Mansons, uh, Squeaky From. Squeaky with no. who? Um, I forget who the politician was, but you, oh, you are correct. Okay. They did go after somebody. Okay. So, John was kind of right because on March 30th, Reagan was shot by John Hinckley Jr. Oh. And he was shot on the left side. Oh, Jodie Foster. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that yep. so, so John Hinckley Jr. shot Reagan on the left side after Reagan did a speech in Washington, D.C. John Hinckley Jr. did this because he was trying to impress Jodie Foster. <laughs> Call back to Taxi Driver. Because he was oh obsessed with the movie <laughs> Taxi, Taxi Driver. Driver. Martin Scorsese oh my God. or Scorsese? Yeah. It's Scorsese. And you know what's actually really <laughs> funny? I was just saying to Jerry, that is such a good movie. Oh, yeah. I always forget how good of a fucking movie that it is. It is. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's a great film. It might be time to revisit it, too. Yeah. Bizarre Buffet movie yeah. night. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a reading of Taxi Driver. We should. You I want to. I want to play De Niro. Okay, I'm gonna be Jodie Foster. I want to be the taxi. Oh, I knew that's cute. exactly what you're gonna say. Beep, beep. So, so <laughs> basically, he did this to impress Jodie Foster, and I'm like, you're barking up the wrong lesbian. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. I do have to say this. So when I was doing my research, and I kind of went down this rabbit hole. Back in uh, November of last year, so 2021, Jodie Foster was asked by the Hollywood Observer if she was actually impressed by John Hinckley Jr.'s attempt to kill Ronald Reagan. What did she say? And her response was... Truth be told, I was a little impressed. Oh! Yay, 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 yay! Jody Foster's icon. Jody Foster's no, awesome. No, no, icon. No. 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 Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's my favorite film. Yeah, well, unfortunately. Reagan he, lived. He, yeah, yeah, Reagan lived. It was an unsuccessful attempt. Oh, good job, John. This psychic also did predict other things about O.J. Simpson. So Really? Yeah. Apparently, he said that there was like a secret weapon hidden on the property and it was in the yard. And then uh, I think in 2014, they were like renovating and they shut up. No, they no. were digging the backyard and they found like a knife. What? Uh, oh my God. But I mean, this is all hearsay. Uh, fascinating. So they call John for this case, right? To help track Mark Branch. And they present him with a photo of Sharon, uh-huh. the victim, and nothing else. Now, upon looking at the photo, he was like, I feel violence. But in my opinion, it's like, okay, you have a homicide detective <laughs> handing over a photo of a young, beautiful yeah. girl, yeah. a young woman, to someone. It's like, of course she was fucking murdered. Well, and exactly. murder is peaceful. Yes. Yeah. But so, also, it's reading. like, yeah, you're a psychic, you know, let's use air quotes, psychic. Yeah. And you're being called by a police department to help with something. I mean, it's clearly not a celebration or um, a surprise party. Yeah. Right? Right. Like. <laughs> and also with like the Reagan prediction, it's like, oh, he was shot on the left side. Well, you always aim for the left because that's where the heart is. Also, oh. not for nothing, but it's like, okay, he's the president. He's going to be doing a lot of his speeches. Where? In Washington, D.C. Yeah. So I feel like he did that, these really broad general things and they happen to line up. Yes. And it's also the type of thing where like you look at, I mean, controversial people, you know. Oh, yeah. He was, he was, you know, a Trump. Yeah. 
he had a lot of people who did not like him, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, John the Psychic also, when he was holding the photo, this is where it gets a little bit weird. Oh. Where you have to kind of start, like, maybe he's a psychic. Oh, and shit, really? Maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. Like, okay. that's a little up to more, us to decide. Yeah. But he's holding the the photo and in his head he keeps hearing the word jason shut up mm-hmm. uh, he keeps hearing the word jason what? So wait, i have a question yeah. before we go on to this a little bit deeper was he aware of this mark who was obsessed with jason Voorhees? okay so mm, i thought this, i thought the same thing too uh-huh. but there was not enough time So I think they did this a few days after the murder. Okay. Okay. So I would say it's probably like a week in. People knew that someone was murdered, but I don't think they knew the extent that he was like obsessed with Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Okay. And and I feel as though that would be like information that, you know, how, you know, they're not allowed to speak about certain aspects of a case because it could compromise the investigation, essentially. Not to say that that's never done, because clearly I'm sure it is many times and it's been proven, but, you know, I feel as though giving out that kind of information would not be okay, Mm -hmm. typically speaking. Yeah. Now, during this, he also got flashes of confusing images, but he knew exactly where the cops needed to go. So he took the investigators to the same area where Mark's car was found, but walked them into the forest where they came across an abandoned slaughterhouse. They ended up going inside the slaughterhouse and they found drawings all over the walls on the inside, one including a man wearing a hockey mask, murdering a woman on a set of stairs, which is very similar to the the murder. Was this like Mark's lair? It could have been. It totally could have been his lair. Under the wow. like the stick figure picture, it's there was like you know graffiti under mm-hmm. it or a title, and it said "A Death by Intention." Oh, there was also other like graffiti inside the um, slaughterhouse, like it said "Crystal Lake," and there was another one that said "Jason Lives," which is like one of the sequels. one of the movies, yeah, kind of like shit like that. But I will say this: take that with a grain of salt because that place could have been like a popular hangout. Where, like, right. teens vandalized it. Well, and that's exactly like, yeah. what I was just about to follow up with, was that that could be a place where kids just kind of want to go chill and drink and do the things you're not supposed to do. Yeah. You know, when exa- you're a kid. Exactly. Mine was Atlantic City. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> Call back to Judy Smith. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then there was, like, other horror movie stuff that was, like, Freddy Lives. So, I mean, like, it oh. could have been him, but it could have been and, the kids. And, you go to any abandoned place and it... There's always, there's I always mean, weird shit yeah, like that. There's uh, always a pentacle. Yeah. Always. There's always like an upside down cross, and I'm like, I feel welcome here. So yeah, it's like 666 yeah, six six written on the wall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There's certain things that are just like always there. Yeah. You know? After they discovered this slaughterhouse, they did a search of the forest. They couldn't find anything. And then the town went into a frenzy again. Now we're fueling the satanic panic agenda, and we have chaos. Yeah. From this chaos comes vigilantes, mm. local hunters going out hunting for Mark. But in my opinion, I don't think they were trying to restore justice. I think they were just trying to inflict violence for the sake of oh, inflicting violence. a million fucking percent. It just gave them an excuse yeah. to go yeah. out on their obsessed god warrior rants yeah. and fucking kill somebody because they're just different kinds of psychos. Like, I think vigilantes like that, I don't think they really care about the victim. I think they're just trying to oh, yeah. be yeah. violent for the sake of being Oh, absolutely. Violent it gives them... heroes. Yeah, it gives them an excuse to be violent without getting in trouble for it because if they were yeah. to catch this person and kill them, they would be like, oh, well, oh, well, you know. So after a few days, they can't find anything. John Monty, the psychic, goes back to the detectives and the police, and he says, I know exactly where Mark Branch is now. I had a vision of him hanging himself in a tree Shut up. in that forest. Uh, no. So is it true? Hanging? So November, oh, on November 29th, 1988, what? so about like a month after Halloween, a hunter by the name of Kevin Purrington goes out hunting for deer, and he came across a decomposing body hanging from a tree. The man was hanging by boot laces and a belt. Was there a Jason Voorhees mask on oh, his I kind hope of? So. 
I don't know. Mm. There's spec- there's some things saying that there was, and there's some things saying that there wasn't. Oh, okay. God. So, I want to know. But John um, did predict that he was going to be hanging from laces and a belt. Oh, which, John. Which he was. And John Monty. Some places say that he was wearing a hockey mask, and then some say he wasn't. The cause of death was intentional hanging. There was an autopsy done. Uh They believe that he most likely hung himself on the 24th of October, which is the same day that he killed Sharon. Oh, holy shit. So basically, when they did the the search, they just did a shitty job because they didn't find him. Yeah. But then also there's speculation that, okay, it could have been vigilantes because if there was a hockey mask on on him maybe they did that to mock him or to mock jason Voorhees. yeah so i mean i don't think these backwoods people are that clever yeah. but okay no. <laughs> and the only place i saw anything mentioning him the corpse having a hockey mask was on reddit okay so i mean take and it we, was we gotta put it out there put it out there absolutely mm-hmm. you know um i i lean more towards the the suicide just because of the proximity oh, to I where the body so. was i yeah. think so yeah i think that folklore you know people people want a jazzed up story right so it's like you want this image and somebody is going to say or create something like maybe he was wearing the mask and we'll never know, which we is won't. part of the intrigue. Yeah. You know, but like people want that right. narrative. Yeah. For the obvious I reasons, you know, and the, the family wanted nothing out there to the public. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's my bad. <laughs> it, it's really like scraping bottom of the barrel to find anything unique about this, yeah. you know? So basically, to wrap it up, because this is like the end of Mm -hmm. the episode, you know, personally, what I find the most odd about this is just how multi-layered it is. And it's like a grand slam of bizarre. Yeah. You know, I don't personally blame the movies for this. I blame mental illness. I blame the system. absolutely. And we were just talking about this with Jeffrey Dahmer, which that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. But we were just talking about that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mental illness. Just before we recorded this. Yeah. Not people or. Yeah. It's just nature, nurture, mental illness. Mm -hmm. So many things combined. And I'm glad, Jen, that you brought up, you mentioned, like, Columbine, because I was in, like, sixth grade when Columbine happened. And the school, I went to a Catholic school, it was called St. Michael's in Union, New Jersey, so <laughs> don't burn it down. Yeah. But um, basically, Wink. the nuns and the everyone came after me, and they, they actually labeled me as, like, a Satanist, mm-hmm. and <laughs> they were right. Yeah, <laughs> but, well, we are. Um, yeah. But they also, you know, they targeted me because I had, like, you know, Freddy Krueger on my notebook, and... All that other stuff. So, you know, I was basically labeled as, like, the next Columbine. Mm. So it's, like, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. It it does. It does. The pendulum swings both ways. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Oh, I'm not. Those kids were lame. They couldn't watch rated R movies. I know, but still, like, the fact that, like, you you, you were kind of getting label just for having Freddy Krueger on a notebook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is like a popular movie and people are so lame to be like, oh, exactly. yeah, you know, if and, people want to kill what they fear. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and also to just with this case, I think it's odd because it involves like a questionable psychic. Oh, yeah. Identical twins, murder, slaughterhouse, weird imagery, a fake Jason Voorhees, you know, literally everything you can think of. Yeah, truly. One Story. Yeah, it's really. All you can eat. Weird. Of weird. It, it was, really that was really. Is. Oh that my was god. So good, Mark. That was. That amazing. is like. That was really fantastic. Yeah, thank you. It was. Yeah, and I've never heard of this. I've story. never heard of it either. Wow. There was just so many elements. So putting it together. It was very hard. I can imagine because you get into psychics, so then yeah. you, you have the movie aspect. You have satanic panic. You yeah. have this. It, like there's mm-hmm. a lot. The eighties, you know, the eighties in general. Yeah, really. Halloween they, in general. Yeah, you know? Halloween. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I mean, if you want to stalk us as your favorite horror movie villain, maybe you can go to patreoncom buffet and for three dollars a month, you can get lots of things. Deleted content. You'll get a pin. 
You'll Designed get by Mark, Mark Toriello. Yeah. There you Handmade go. Handmade by me, bitch. Handmade. At the $10 tier, you get everything. You get drawings of your choice. You tell us what you want us to draw, we all draw it for you. Blindfolded. Blind, blindfolded. blindfolded. Yes, most importantly, blindfolded. And you'll get a video of us doing such and blindfolded And you also get drawing. a video shout out. Yes, you do. You but do. make on sure South. you also follow us on Instagram. Very important. On Facebook. Yes, absolutely. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That helps us a whole fucking lot. It Subscribe does. to us on YouTube. Hi. Yes. Hey. Hi. Hi. You can see us. Can you see us? We're waving. Hi. Yeah. We're here with you. Hand. Put your hand up. Yeah. yeah. We're here. Hi. Oh, I feel Hi. it. Do you, Do you feel it? I feel it. I feel it really. Mm. I'm doing Reiki to you. Oh my, oh my God. Reiki. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Reiki. Shout out to Reiki and Jilly Juice. <laughs> and Jill. Love Jillian. She's great. But um, I guess with that being said. <clears throat> I'm Heather Langenkamp, the star of Nightmare on Elm Street, part one and three, and also the last one. And I'm a scapel. Appropriate name. And I'm Mrs. Voorhees. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Jodie Foster, taxi driver. (laughs)